Good morning, my beautiful students. Here we are, the last module of CHE 101 General Chemistry 1, Module 5.5, Buffer Solutions. This is a very interesting topic. We're going to use it to wind down on our lectures for CHE 101 this semester. I hope you enjoyed the class. I hope you understood all we've learned. And as usual, I expect you to ask your questions at any point you don't understand anything. So let's look at buffer solutions. Okay, so the outline of this lecture, buffer solutions, will be introduction to buffer solutions. We'll look at what buffer solutions are look at pH of buffer solutions, look at some illustrations, and we'll make some conclusions. Introduction. Certain solutions are known whose pH is not affected by the addition of small amount of acid or base. Such solutions are known as buffer solutions. Buffer solutions are defined as solutions whose pH will not drastically change by the addition of a small amount of acid or base. Now, I know you must have come across buffer solutions in the lab. You know, solutions, when you have a pH of, say, 2.0, if it's a buffer solution of 2.0, if you add an acid or base, the pH of that solution will just change slightly, probably about 0.02 or 0.05. It cannot change drastically from 2.0 to 3.0 or drop from 2.0 to 1.0 or even increase from 2.0 to 4.0. That's one of my buffer solutions. I will also come to see there are some buffer solutions, examples, the human blood. We will see that so that we we'll understand what we mean by buffer solutions further. Now, buffer solutions are used to obtain solutions of constant hydrogen, ion concentration you see the hydrogen ion concentration will remain fairly constant that's one of the reasons for buffer solution so the hydrogen ion concentration will not change drastically animals and plants are protected against changes in ph by the presence of buffers a good example of buffer solution is human blood so you see why we're saying buffer solutions are important the blood is a buffer solution and that is why when there are pH changes in the blood, the blood will withstand this pH change. That is, there won't be drastic pH change of the blood. Because if that happens, then automatically the cells will be in trouble. And when the cells get into trouble, then the human being will be in trouble also. In living systems, the buffering action is provided by the carbonic acid and the carbonates phosphoric acid and phosphates, various proteins which can both accept and donate hydrogen ions. So you see th those proteins have so many functions in the human system or in blood. So H2CO3 and HCO3 can act as a buffer solution in the human system. We'll see when we talk about compositions or buffer solutions, how this or this can act as a buffer solution. Buffer solutions are usually made up of the solution of a weak acid and sodium salt of the acid. For instance, ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Remember when we talked about acid-based chemistry, we mentioned ethanoic acid as a weak acid. It can only furnish some percentage of its hydrogen ions. So ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoate, or carbonic acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate, which we saw in the last slide. It can also, buffer solutions can also be made up of weak base in the presence of one of its salts. For example, ammonia, which is a weak base, ammonia solution, and ammonium chloride. Let us consider a weak acid, ethanoic acid, and sodium salt of ethanoic acid called sodium ethanoate. Let's consider this buffer solution. 
in solution the acetic acid or ethanoic acid is slightly dissociated and the sodium ethanoate is highly dissociated what you mean by slightly dissociated here is that it will furnish reluctantly only this hydrogen ion and not this and then this highly dissociated because the entire sodium ion will be released you know remaining ethanoate ion now the structure of the two in solution is likely to contain few hydrogen ions and large proportion of anions of the acid that's what we're saying this is slightly ionized this is you know fully ionized look at the equation one ch3coh will form chcoh and h plus and of course ch3coh and a were ionized to give ch3coh and na plus look at contribution ch3coh here and also ch3coh here However, if a small amount of HCl is added to the solution, now look at what happens. That is the chemistry of the buffer solution. If HCl is added to the solution, now the solution will tend to unite with the ethanoic ions to form ethanoic acid. So when you add HCl, it will unite with the ethanoic. Remember the hydrogen, the HCl will ionize into hydrogen ions and chloride ions so the hydrogen ions will react to the ethanoate ion to form ethanoic acid hence the slight increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution is greatly reduced by the presence of sodium ethanoate which supplies ethanoate ion so as long as the sodium ethanoate is in the buffer it supplies ethanoate ion which captures the hydrogen ion from hcl remember hcl is an acid so you've added an acid I remember our Bronsted and Lowry theory, you know, release of proton. So the proton that is released to show the acidity of HCl is captured by this ethanoid ion, thereby reducing the concentration of these hydrogen ions that you added by adding this acid. Similarly, if a small amount of alkali, that is a base, is added to the solution, that means we are adding OH minus ions. So the OH minus ions will combine with the hydrogen ions to form water. Remember there is hydrogen ion that is given by the dissociation of acetic acid, that is ethanoic acid in the buffer solution. So that hydrogen ion will combine with the OH ions to form water. And again, the hydrogen ion concentration undergoes practically no change because hydrogen ions are replaced by excess ethanoic acid. pH of buffer solutions. The pH of buffer solutions can be calculated from dissociation constants of weak acid or weak base and the concentration of the acid. Remember, we have looked at dissociation constants of weak acid and weak base, and we are saying that this buffer solution is made up of a weak acid or weak base with sodium salt of that acid. So we are looking at it at the same dissociation constant. Now, if you consider the case of a weak acid and its sodium salt, that is the one we just use as an example, sodium ethanoate and ethanoic acid, it looks like this, this HA ionizing to give hydrogen ions and A minus. And from what we did in the last module, we have Ka, the association constant of the acid, as a product, concentration of the products H plus and A minus divided by concentration of that acid HA. Therefore, hydrogen ion concentration will do simplification, cross multiply, and make hydrogen ion concentration the subject. If you cross multiply Ka multiplied by HA, which is this, then divide by A minus will give us hydrogen ion concentration. Since the acid is only slightly dissociated, then A minus, concentration of A minus, can be regarded as derived entirely from the salt. Therefore, Hydrogen ion concentration, this is H plus, is equal to Ka multiplied by, this becomes the acid and this becomes the salt. And that gives us equation four. Since the ratio acid to salt is constant on dilution, the pH of the solution is also not affected by dilution. So you can see that's the chemistry again. 
So considering a weak acid, ethanoic acid, and sodium ethanoate, essentially the stable pH of the buffer is due to one, a high ethanoate, which traps hydrogen ions, as we explained, and of course, a high ethanoic acid, which can supply hydrogen ions to trap the OH minus ions. Okay, we have an illustration here. 4.10 grams of sodium ethanoate is dissolved in 1 dm cube of 0.01 ethanoic acid. What is the pH of the resulting solution? Given that the Ka of ethanoic acid is given as 1.7 times 10 to power minus 5. This is very simple. We calculate the molecular weight of sodium ethanoate as 82. Of course, you know that carbon is 12. Hydrogen is 1 times 3. Carbon is 12 here again. Oxygen is 16 times 2. That's 32. And then sodium is 23. That gives us 82 grams. So which means 82 grams of sodium ethanoate is equal to 1 mole. Well, therefore, 4.10 grams of sodium ethanoate will be 4.10 grams over 82. That will give us 0 0.05 moles. But hydrogen ion concentration, this is the last equation we met, is equal to Ka multiplied by acid over salt. We are given the Ka as 1.7 times 10 to the power minus 5 times 0 0.01 ethanoic acid and 0 0.05, which we calculated there for sodium ethanoate. And that gives us this. But the pH is minus log of hydrogen ion concentration. We've calculated hydrogen ion concentration as 3.4 times 10 to the power minus 6. So we'll plug in that value here. We'll have a pH of 5.47. Now, the second illustration, the second illustration is saying what is the pH of the solution above, the one we did, remember what we did there, when we now add 1 cm cube of 1 molar HCl solution to 1 dm cube of the solution. Again, second question is what is the change in pH of the solution? Again, when we add, this time we're adding a base. The first one we're adding 1 molar HCl, but this time we're adding 0. 001 moles of sodium hydroxide. So we now work that out. Addition of 1 cm cube gives 0. 0.001 moles of HCl added. Then addition of 0. 0.001 moles of HCl. Therefore, the concentration of the ethanoid falls and the concentration of ethanoic acid rises because we added acid. And we'll check the concentration now. It will be 0 0.05 before minus 0 0.01, which gives us 0 0.049. And this will be 0 0.01 plus 0 0.001, which is 0 0.011. Therefore, hydrogen ion concentration is equal to K times acid over salt, which gives us this value. Multiply by, we we'll substitute 0 0.049 and 0 0.01. And we'll have 3.816 times 10 to the power minus 6. Then pH is minus log of that hydrogen ion concentration, and we're getting 5.42. Remember, initially in illustration one, we had 5.47. This is 5.42. The second one, introducing one cm cube of one molar sodium hydroxide, means introducing 0 0.001 moles sodium hydroxide. Therefore, this ethanoid will be 0 0.05 plus 0 0.001, which gives us 0 0.051, whereas the ethanoic acid will be 0 0.01 minus 0 0.001. This will increase and this will uh, reduce. We have 0 0.009. We'll do the same thing again, find the hydrogen ion concentration, and we'll have 3 times 10 to the power minus 6, and we'll find the pH, we'll have 5.52. Now look at it in the first place. In illustration one, we had a pH of 5.47. On addition of one mole HCl, that is one cm cube of one mole HCl, we're having a pH of 5.42. The difference is 5.42 minus 
five point I mean five point four seven minus five point four two we have zero point zero five. In the second case we have five point five two. So five point four seven minus five point five two we have minus zero point zero five. So which means on addition of acid and addition of base, the pH of that buffer solution only changed by zero point zero five units, either by increase or by decrease. So you can see that the change in the pH is very 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 small we can even neglect this because if you approximate this will give us 0 0.1 which is not very appreciable and that's the function of the buffer solution all right thank you very much thank you very much we looked at the introduction of buffer solutions we look at buffer solution definitions we look at ph of buffer solutions and we look at illustrations here we have about I think about four or five illustrations, and that is to make this easier for you. I believe you've understood all the lectures we've done going from module one up to module five. Of course, the next thing that follows is assignment, quiz, tests before our exams to see how far you have understood all these lectures. Thank you very much, and this is where we'll end for the semester. We are still open to any explanations. As your questions come in, we can always explain. Thank you so very much and God bless you. Hoping to see you by next semester. Thank you. <laughs>